what that means. And joining me today is Colonel Maxwell. He's director of Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics. We got Miss Jan Dawson. She is with Make Mississippi OD Free Campaign. And we got Miss Cordy Rodenball. Did I get it right? <laughs> Her son helped inspire legislation uh, to contribute to um, holding those drug dealers accountable and more. So welcome. I know this is a tough topic talking about uh, overdosing or drugs, but it's to me it's a good thing because I'm going to start with you, uh, Jan, because these type of campaigns help show that Mississippians are on the ground in the trenches hoping to you know raise awareness and stop these overdoses. So tell us a little bit about Make Mississippi OD Free. Absolutely. We uh, are currently hosting a website called odfree.org, and uh, along with it, we have a media campaign that's also running uh, on social media as well as on television. And the purpose behind this website and this media campaign is to educate people about prevention of overdose. Uh, On that website, you will find a, a large number of resources, information about overdose, information about how to find treatment, But also on that website, you can also uh, request a town hall meeting for us to come in and and talk to you and do education within your community. But also the most important thing to me is you can go on that website and request a naloxone kit that has information in it uh, about how to administer naloxone in case of an opioid overdose. Um, And it will be shipped to you free. It does ask for some information on that website uh, when you request that. If you choose to put in your insurance information, that insurance money goes back into the program to help buy more naloxone. However, if you choose not to share that information, uh, we still ship that to you for free. So right now in Mississippi, we consider that one of our biggest, best projects toward uh, reducing overdose. It's hard to know sometimes how many people you're saving, but we believe that it's probably in the thousands at this point in time. And we're just beginning to collect the data about how it's being utilized. Colonel Maxwell, I see you shaking your head when it's like how many people were saved. And you're like, yes, you are, because, you know, I feel like it's one of these statistics. And a lot of times with unfortunate uh, scenarios, we get all, we get bombarded with all these numbers and statistics. And we forget, we get numb to them, that these are people. These are actual individuals. And, you know, when we start to connect those dots that, hey, these are our loved ones, that's when we start to really wake up. But from your perspective, Colonel Maxwell, with the statistics, where are we kind of with overdoses in your jobs do you see every day? What I can tell you, Rebecca, is that uh, drug addiction and uh, drug overdose and drug overdose death associated uh, with that addiction continues to be an issue throughout the state of Mississippi. Uh, The drug culture is constantly evolving. Uh, What we're dealing with today, we won't be dealing with tomorrow. What we're dealing with this year, uh, we won't be dealing with next year. And hopefully we'll get a chance to talk a little bit about how that evolution impacts uh, our challenges in improving the quality of life for Mississippians throughout the state. Uh, But what I can also tell you is that uh, Governor Reeves and Commissioner Tindall are committed to that. Uh, And I think that their work with our state legislature uh, and we'll get into some of those things today with uh, legislation that was passed this year and last year, put us in a position, I think, uniquely, other than the other 49 states, where we're at the tip of the spear of this challenge, and uh, and we're going to remain there with partners like MPHI and also uh, with mothers like Cordy uh, in the fight now. Right, and Cordy, I mean, thank you so much for being here and also having the courage to share your story about your your son, Parker. I'm going to get you to come a little bit closer to the, so we can make sure we hear your wonderful story. So share us uh, Parker's story and then why it's important for you to, you know, to continue to raise that awareness and shout from the rooftops, you know. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, Mothers across the nation are, mothers across the nation are trying to just yell out you know, the help that we need to make all our kids aware. Um, My son Parker was 22, starting his uh, junior year at Mississippi State. Loved life, best kid. Drugs was not on our radar at all. I mean, we did everything that we thought was right, kept them active, you know, in sports, everything. And you can't protect your kids all the time. And there will be maybe a bad decision you know just a one wrong decision and that's what happened to Parker he was headed to college move-in weekend but what we didn't know was another friend of his from high school Mm. also moved to that college town with no job no intent for school 
but had bought 450 synthetic drugs over the internet from China. Holy cow. Deadly drugs. His intent was to get Parker and all his friends to take that drug and make turn into what he paid a do- well, 80 cents for a drug to $10. So his intentions were not pure. Oh, no. <laughs> no. And so he caught Parker at a vulnerable time that he moved in, and um, they, they were having a fantasy football party at the house that he had moved into, and no one even knew that Parker was there. And he ran, in, ran into this guy. He took it. I don't know why he took it. Never will know, but he took it. And um, what Parker he took was a synthetic LSD 25i, which doesn't exist anymore, thank God. But it was so deadly that to touch it, it could get into your system just by in your skin. But anyway, Parker proceeded to start talking into circles. A boy from Ole Miss there went to the dealer and said, something's wrong with Parker. He just dismissed it. And he said, oh, he's just having a bad reaction, a bad trip, and just, you know, he'll be fine. Then Parker proceeded running into walls, shelves, bleeding head, knees. Someone saw him sitting on the steps bleeding. But all the while, his friends thought, well, gosh, Parker's just drunk. They never thought drugs. And if they did, oh. they were scared to maybe reach out. Yeah. Right. And so anyway, um, three hours went. That dealer was there watching this whole time. Never got him help. And Parker proceeded to fall into convulsions, turning blue, foaming at the mouth. Roommates yelled to call 911. That guy went back to his apartment, started playing video games. No concern. So anyway, Parker died. This guy was arrested. He was convicted of drug trafficking, got 10 years. He was convicted of Parker's murder, he got 20 years. But with a t- technicality in Supreme Court, it was overturned. So that's when I went and um, actually a DA from Starkville called and said, Cordy, we can't let this ever happen to another kid. Right. And we need a Parker's Law. And I was like, how in the world? And then I thought about it. I remembered a time when Parker told me, said, Mom, we were discussing what was he going to do after he got out of school. He said, I don't know exactly, but I want to make a difference in this world. And I thought, I'm going to make that difference for my son. Absolutely. And so we started on Parker's Law. And all the legislators um, this past couple years Chairman, Representative Nick Bain, got behind me strongly, and we got it passed. And what does it say now? Right now, it holds drug dealers, fentanyl drug dealers, accountable for the deaths that they cause, and it's 20 to life. But we're wanting to add other synthetic drugs because there's more synthetic drugs coming down this line that are even deadlier than fentanyl. So we've got work to do on it. We've got... The wording, work to do on Parker's Law, is not perfect right now. But it's a start. It's a start. It's a start. And we have been, and Parker, it was 2014 when he died. And no one knew what synthetic drugs were. No. And I would stand up and tell people, and they just thought I was crazy. They didn't know exactly what. And trying to get the awareness out. It, and I think that's one thing we have done well is get the awareness out. So, Colonel Maxwell, before Parker's Law, would it have been where the drug dealer obviously would have gotten in trouble for dealing drugs, but you couldn't pin a death on a drug dealer? Is that kind of the thing? Not as well as we can now. Now, anyway. All right. And that's a good place for us to pause. We're going to come back and talk more about making Mississippi OD free coming up. Com. You'll see I got a whole crew with me today. We're talking something good. I think it's great that we're trying to make Mississippi OD free. And we have the day, Take Back Day, which we will get to, which is April 22nd. Which you just heard a wonderful story from Cordy, who shared of her son, Parker, who lost his life to, it's not fentanyl, but it was something it else, was, a synthetic yes, drug. Synthetic drug. Yes. And, and after that, fentanyl just came in strong. 
which and it has really not slowed down, sadly, uh, Colonel Maxwell. But Parker's Law lays the foundation for, I guess, law enforcement uh, to have a better tool against those caught being the one that provided it, correct? Yes, it does. It broadens the thoroughfare um, that uh, Governor Reeves and Sean uh, Tindall, our commissioner, has been working with the legislature on. Uh, you know, Parker's Law marries very well uh, with an existing law, which is our Good Samaritan Law, um, that should encourage um, you know individuals who are there when someone is overdosing to call for EMS. It marries very well also with the Victoria Huggins Pill Press Act, and now. Uh, this year uh, with House Bill 4, which places um, tianeptine, a drug that you could acquisition over the counter uh, that is just as dangerous as some of these synthetic opioids. And I said that Cordy brought up a great point when she uh, spoke about the fact that there are other synthetic opioids and other synthetic drugs that are just as potent as fentanyl, such as nitazines, uh, that we're having discussions about right now. And, and hopefully we'll uh, follow the same blueprint working with our legislature to continue to improve the quality of life for Mississippians by getting those drugs scheduled as well. And we were just talking, you wonder if it all comes together, like, Jan, with the Make Mississippi OD Free and being able to have the kits or all of the things on hand. You wonder if, uh, you know, Parker's friends would have had it there at the apartment or the house or knew how to use it or felt confident in it. Would it have changed anything? You can't think back that way, but maybe you can think into the future. Because you do feel like those kids, maybe if he had one good friend, was scared to call in. Not that that excuses not taking care of your friends, but you can put yourself in that position where it would be. Uh, you know, and I think that's something Colonel Maxwell more um, universities need to their kids need to know you're not in trouble. You don't, I don't think you don't get in trouble if you call and save a friend, right? And if it's uh, absolutely scary, I mean, that's like right. <laughs> slippery slope there. I don't know, but yeah. so the, the Good Samaritan law, um, you know, it it protects uh, those individuals who were there witnessing someone overdosing. Uh, if they if they call law enforcement, if they call, um, you know, for EMS support, because they're essentially doing that to save that person's life. And what we have to remember is, you know, people who are using drugs, they're not using drugs because they want to die. They're using drugs because right. they want to get high uh, for any number of reasons, whether it's a behavioral health issue, a mental health issue, or there's dealing with some type of trauma uh, as a result of an event that they experienced early on in life. And so we've got to move away from the stigma uh, associated from that. Yes. And we've got to encourage people to pick up the phone and make the call. And I love, too, the idea of the shifting the mindset of sort of an OD, it being a poisoning, because really, again, it kind of is. It's a poisoning. They weren't trying to overdose. It was completely accidental. Um, and, Jan, I know a good way to help is getting involved with the Take Back Day. And I know that's coming up April the 22nd. We want to give folks plenty of information on that. Um, what is that day and what surrounds it? So April 22nd is our uh, drug Take Back Day in the state of Mississippi. And on that day, people can take their prescription drugs back to uh, different location sites. And if you go to the MSPHI.org website, there is a link there to all the collection sites in the state. Many, many uh, pharmacies have a, a drug take back box. And it, although it may not be, um, you may not have ever noticed it before, it's there, it looks like a giant mailbox. DEA comes through and cleans out those drugs and destroys them. So I know oftentimes people have a surgery or they just have a drug in their cabinet that they, uh, for whatever reason, can't take. And they keep them in their medicine cabinet without even thinking about the fact that they're there. But when you have someone who has the disease of addiction, sometimes you don't, you don't really realize what they're looking for. Sometimes they don't realize what they're looking for. Um, so it's just better to take it back on on drug take back day or any other day of, of the year. We have two drug take back days in a year that we really emphasize on getting rid of your drugs and taking those things out of the cabinets. But don't flush them. Please don't flush them. That's not they're good. not goldfish. No, it's not good for our environment. There are way too many other ways to dispose of them. If you are not able to get to a drug take back site, if you go to Mississippi. Uh, Public Health Institute's website, which is msphi.org, you can also request something called a doTERRA bag. And a doTERRA bag is very simple. It's a Ziploc bag, has some uh, uh, material in it. You put your medication inside of it, add a little water to it, zip it up, throw it in the trash, and it is completely safe for the environment. So if you don't have a drug take-back site close to you, 
uh, you can always request that that way. Cordy, again, I mean, it's just so courageous for you to be able to stand up and talk about it and know that you're, you know, Parker is helping save lives, right, through through his untimely death. What to other mothers, though, that are, you know, maybe ashamed of, of their kids' one wrong choice or wrestling with whatever it may be, the courage that their stories can, I mean, not necessarily that you have to share your, your family's dirty laundry or whatever, but get behind it, get out there, you know, the more voices, I feel like, the better. And I wish that I could talk to every mother. I mean, yes, Parker didn't have a substance use disorder, but who's to say down the line he would have gotten it? After, because after you try one of these drugs, right. it hooks you. And so, but there are kids out there that, for all sorts of reasons, get, you know, substance use disorder. I mean, from getting their wisdom teeth taken out taking you know a medicine to hurting their ankle to anything when your child needs help please get it for them and don't feel ashamed I mean we all understand and nowadays it is so common that you shouldn't feel ashamed your next door neighbor probably has a child dealing with the same issues and for you to speak up because you don't know who you're helping right. me I wanted to shout it from the rooftops I still do I want to climb the tallest mountain and just scream it and it's going to take mothers like her Colonel Maxwell to help strengthen Parker's law and to create more legislation to sort of do that which here in Mississippi it feels like we've been very progressive in the right way on that legislation so for folks who think gosh I wish somebody would do something you're saying we're trying well yeah. Mississippians are blessed Uh, We've got a governor, we've got a commissioner of the Mississippi Department of Public Safety, and we've got a legislative body, both in the House and Senate, uh, who listen to us, and um, they table our concerns. Uh, With that, we have seen within the past few years legislation that has come out that broadens the thoroughfare for us to judicially accountable uh, bring people in and, and hold them responsible for their actions, uh, you know, when they are selling these drugs that obviously have a potency that not only result in uh, addiction, uh, but overdose and overdose stemming from, um, you know, that and death as well. And Ms. Jan, I know there's people listening that's like, man, that was a lot that was going on today here on Good Things. I knew, told y'all it was a good topic. It's a tough topic, but it's a good topic because I feel like now we have things that we can sort of use or do or conversations to start, even though we all want to put our kids in a bubble <laughs> and they can't, you know, and, and, and watch their every move. But that doesn't work either. So where would the first step be for someone? Is it going to the website, taking part of Take Back? Where would you, what would you say? So there are lots of ways that people can reach out. First of all, the the first thing that we want to say is uh, don't be embarrassed. Lots of people have the story. We're encouraging people to tell their stories, especially their stories of success. Uh, Lots of people recover every day from mental health disorders or from substance use addictions. So what, what we want to say is reach out to someone. You can call the the main line at the Department of Mental Health. You can call your local community mental health center. You can go to the OD Free website and find all the resources for how to reach out to find treatment. We are trying to make this as easy and as normal as possible. But the important thing is don't take time to be embarrassed. Take time to do something for your loved one or for yourself. And one of the things that we we want to do is to begin normalizing that conversation. We want people to tell their stories. Reach out to us to tell your story about recovery or your, your, um, your journey as you went through a mental health crisis. Um, because sometimes people feel like they are stuck in that space. You don't have to be stuck. No. We will help you. And I'd like to say also is... A lot of people look at you and think it's your problem. It's our problem. I agree. It is coming from all ages, from middle age to college age to high school age to 12-year-olds to 10-year-olds, now to one-year-olds, infants. There will be substance in playgrounds that they get hooked up and die. On the floor on an Airbnb, they die. Your kid 
you say you've raised them right, they won't do this. Don't ever think that. That's what I thought. And, and look can, where I'm at. And we can all protect each other and tell your drug dealer they will get charged for murder. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Thanks to <laughs> Parker's Law. Thanks to all of y'all, too. I think we just keep raising the awareness, keep having the conversation. We'll see y'all back next year. But you guys stick with us. We're shifting to the Delta.